Greetings, Marshall Club family. It's uh, Dima from Marshall Club. Today I wanted to do an aerial tutorial, and I'm hoping this video is going to be as educational for you guys as I know it will be for me. So just to set it up, I was training yesterday, and I noticed my aerial is rusty AF, and it kind of bothered me because at one point, the aerial was one of the staples of my bag of tricks, and it was actually a huge triumph for me when I first learned it because it was like that first like legitimate flip. So today I'm gonna revisit it. I'm gonna go through all the steps that allowed me to learn it in the first place. And hopefully there will be a lot to be regained. And if you're new to this technique, hopefully there will be a lot for you guys to gain by watching this video. An aerial is a cartwheel without hands. I'm going to be taking the wushu approach to it as opposed to the tricker approach. I'm going to be doing it on my right side since that's my strong side. That's against wushu convention. Usually when wushu people do aerials, it's off their left foot. My approach to any trick is the realization that a trick is a combination of height and rotation. This is a cartwheel. The only difference is you're doing it without hands. So it's gotta be the most fast, most powerful cartwheel you can manage. And uh, the idea is that you jump into this cartwheel in order to compensate for the fact that your hands aren't gonna be supporting your weight when you're upside down. The rotation, which is the cartwheel itself, has to be second nature, you can't be thinking about it. The time that it takes to think about it is longer than the time that it'll take your head to smash into the floor. You gotta make it second nature and you do that by reps. Reps, reps, reps. That's usually the key to a lot of aspects of martial arts. Just lots and lots of cartwheels and you wanna get it as clean and as fast as possible because that means it'll be efficient. First thing is you have to get it out of your head that this cartwheel is not side to side, it's over your head. You're not winding your body and twisting it over to the other side. You're throwing your hind leg over your head. Straight over your head, not sideways. So that being said, when I complete the rotation, my feet should be piking down directly behind me and I should be facing the way I came. The next thing I should mention is you run into this cartwheel to set it up and uh, in order to take off into the cartwheel you do something called a hurdle. It's a little skip step that one, gives you that final burst of momentum you need and two, it tenses your muscles like a spring so that the second you touch down with your feet you spring into the cartwheel. That gives it that extra explosiveness you need in order to make your legs slice through the air fast. So you want to think of your legs as hot knives cutting through butter. The air is the butter, your legs are the hot knives. You want to slice through as fast as possible. So first thing is progressing through the cartwheel variations. First one would be cartwheel with both hands. Then I'm gonna progress to cartwheel with one hand, starting with the, the near hand, which is the hand that would touch the floor first in the sequence. Once I'm used to doing that, then I want to be able to do a one-handed cartwheel with the far hand. Now, every time I'm doing each of these variations, I wanna do it fast enough, smooth enough, to the point where I'm feeling very little weight in my hands when I'm planting them as I invert. When I get to the point where it feels like there's so little weight in my hands that I can take them away, that gives me a sense that I'm ready to move on to the next variation. And then jumping is the next part. So once you have the cartwheel second nature, you don't have to think about it, it rotates as fast as possible, then you can jump into it and concentrate on jumping high enough to get you suspended into the air long enough for you to complete the cartwheel. When you do a fast, powerful aerial, it should feel like nothing at all when you light onto your feet. Next, you compensate with height. So not everybody slices really fast with their legs. If you cartwheel slower, the way to compensate for that is by jumping higher. And if, you don't, if you're like me and you don't jump very high, that means you have to swing your legs very fast. So if you get the right ratio between height and rotation, that's gonna make the difference of whether you can land the trick or not. And now you're ready to take the leap of faith, as it were, into the no-handed cartwheel, which is the aerial. When you jump, you kind of have to commit to an arm swing because you're jumping to compensate for the fact that your hands aren't going to be supporting your weight when you're upside down. Uh, you have to swing your arms in a way that continues the momentum upwards and forward. Upwards and forward. So there's a couple arm swings you can do. Some people like to throw their arms straight behind them and use that to kind of boost their legs over. Some people like to emphasize the jump. They gather with their arms and they pick up and other people like to do kind of like the side-to-side -side aerial. It's the elbow and the hook punch. One elbow goes parallel to the body, the other goes on the same plane on the other side. I personally like the 
gather because that forces me to focus on the jump which is what my technique seems to require more and also I can still do that and bail if I need to like if I feel like I'm not gonna make it I can still stick my hands out but the motion itself encourages you to keep your hands in and focus on the jump and use that to get you over okay so I did a couple they feel okay but um, they still feel a little bit heavy what it goes to show is that you should never take a trick for granted. Even if you've learned it really, really well, it could always leave you. So it's on you to kind of maintain your tricks. Make sure that the tools are sharpened every once in a while. So troubleshooting. If it feels like you're landing a little too heavy, it probably means you need to take better advantage of the speed leading up to the technique. So allow yourself more runway. Allow yourself the space you need to get mentally prepared to actually dismount fast enough so that you don't have to touch the ground. You kind of reach that sprinting speed by the time you hurdle and dismount into the cartwheel. Most of it is just repetition. Like you really, really want that cartwheel to be second nature. You don't want to be taking time to think about it. How much time you have to execute the cartwheel is dictated by how high you jump. So condition your legs, leg presses, calf raises, all of those help. But most importantly is just practicing cartwheels and practicing aerials. And the last tip I have is for any kind of flip, but especially this one, practice in a safe environment. So the thing is, mentally, you're working just as hard as your body. And if you're absorbing a lot of shock every time you crash or every time you don't quite land the move right, that takes a toll on your mental game. And uh, what you want to do is practice in an environment where you can land on a surface that absorbs your shock. The idea is you want to make your mind able to work in a peaceful environment so that it develops the skill without um, developing fear. Because fear is a real thing and fear will impede the technique. It'll cause you to not learn the technique correctly. So it's really, really important that you choose your training space wisely. And this applies to all martial arts, but most definitely tricking and any kind of acrobatic maneuver. Keep that in mind. So there you guys have it. That's the aerial technique. Learning it is most of the battle, but once you have it, there's a lot of points that can be refined. My aerial's not that great, as you guys can see. World athletes in Wushu can jump really high with their aerials. Uh, the legs stay really straight and they land chest upright when they when their feet touch the floor. In order to get your legs straight, you want to lift from your glutes rather than from your heels. So a lot of people think of raising their legs from the heel. What that does is it causes your, your legs to bend at the knees. What you want to do is learn to lift from the glutes and the hamstrings. That has a tendency to keep your legs straight when you're in midair. But of course, it all depends on how much you drill regular cartwheels. Uh, that's why you want reps reps. That's my tutorial. Remember this aerial tutorial was just as much for myself as it was for you guys. Every once in a while we need a refresher and we can't take our tricks for granted. So that's the big takeaway for this video. Uh, I'm Dima from Marshall Club. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys like what you saw, if you guys would like more tutorials like this, be sure to like it and uh, say so in the comments below. Subscribe to Marshall Club. Follow all of us on Instagram. If you like uh, this shirt, this is the MC trainer that I'm wearing. They're now back in stock as well as the classics in the shop at bigcartel.com. So you guys can go and get those there. Uh, but otherwise, stay tuned to Marshall Club and we've got a lot of good stuff for you coming along the way. And I'll see you guys next time. Dima out.